Hello there Malaysia, this is Jericho here and this is a Wait a Minute production. Today is the 17th of June 2014, it's a Tuesday and it's 11.36am. So last night I watched uh, episode 10 which is the season finale for uh, season 4 of Game of Thrones series from the HBO home box office network or whatever you call them. And I have a few things to actually talk about, especially it's going to be spoilers and discussion between the books and also the show so uh, a bit of history uh, on how I got into these uh, amazing books uh, George R. R. Martin's A Song of Fire and Ice currently now I'm reading like until uh, page 389 of the fourth book which is called A Feast of Four Crows A Feast for Crows yeah uh, this is the second time that I'm reading it. The first time I read these uh, books were a couple of years ago, maybe three, four years ago, and I read it not having, I mean, not using a, a book, but the reading it from the computer. So uh, reading it really fast. Uh, maybe completed one whole book in the space of one week, and these books are very, very, very thick. So I'm not going to show any images from the show and I'm not going to like, uh, yeah, no images, I mean, no no moving images uh, because I'm afraid of all those uh, content ID YouTube things. They flag you, you get three strikes, your channel is poof, gone. All your hard work, gone because they not only demonetize your channel but they completely destroy it. So... Uh, from now onwards, all my reviews on, like, say, movies and whatnot will be with images. So, I watched uh, Jeremy John's uh, review of uh, Season 4, and I read some of the comments, and I have uh, some things to actually say. Yep, interesting in enough. So, Game of Thrones got milk. So Game of Thrones, yeah, season four. Okay, let's. Uh, it is. Uh, it has been a very, very great season, but there were a lot of changes to it that I wasn't. That uh, I was sad to actually not. Uh, not get from the books. I know that the the movie, the TV series, they need to like change it so that it's uh, different from the books could it be better could it, could it be worse who knows but uh, some of the changes were quite surprising and i could say it gave me some goose prickles uh you know uh, what do you call those things when you f you find you think that there's a ghost in the room and there will be a lot of uh, pricks i mean not pricks uh, a lot of uh, little things uh, mix your hair stand on your hand and every interesting place that has hair I guess actually no I have never had goose prickles in my around my groin area hmm interesting so one of the changes that they have made was when, uh, during the scene where they, they pivot towards uh, uh, Brienne Brienne and also Podrick Payne in the whale uh, I was like thinking, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit, they are in the whale, and I know that Arya Stark and the Hound, they are kind of like in the whale, but I wasn't sure whether Arya Stark and the Hound were in the castle, and subsequently meeting Sansa Stark and Littlefinger. So surprisingly enough, Arya and the Hound did not go into the castle of the whale, because Arya had a well, fit of madness and insanity laughing when they found out that Arya Stark's aunt, Lisa, Lisa something, uh, Lisa whatever, died and she laughed like crazy. So the guards around that, uh, I think it's the blood gate, is it? I'm not sure what gate that was. Uh, the first gate of the whale. Ah, and her name is Lisa Aaron. Uh, so the uh, Arya Stark laughed, and of course uh, the guards will will say, 
you think okay this is a mummer's farce can you please f off so they did not enter then they went back down and suddenly Brienne and I um, met and I was thinking oh shit would this really change everything uh, there was an article saying that uh, there is uh, like a butterfly effect with uh, uh, this HBO series because there were so many characters that they actually uh, did not introduce in the in the in the TV series. One of them would be the uh, strong Belvas in the Targaryen area. I mean Targaryen, not Targaryen, in the the slave continent. Uh, of course, strong Belvas wasn't uh, uh, not a particular. Uh, not a particular political power changer or a very important uh, character but uh, it's just uh, some nitpick by the fans uh, saying that oh, they did not like introduce strong Belvas hopefully in the future they will uh, introduce him but I think I get a I think I get a get the drift that nope strong Belvas is never going to be in there and Strong Velvas is not the only one. There were so many characters that they haven't or did not introduce at all. And some of them are kind of like big characters, major characters. So uh, going back to the the scene between Brienne and, and the Hound, wow, it was so amazing. I was thinking, oh shit, what's going to happen? What's going to happen? Is Brienne going to like take Iron Stark under her her wings and go somewhere and I was thinking like what how the hound said where is she going to go uh, the only place that she can go to okay uh, whale the whale is off limits already since uh, Lisa Aaron is dead the only logical choice would be a uh, river run but river run is under siege by the Lannisters uh, and the uncle there, the blackfish, blackfish does not know Arya or Sansa. They, I don't think they have met him before, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, maybe I was, I am wrong. Who knows? So that's the only logical place that that uh, Arya can go. And the other place that she can go to is, of course, the wall, uh, with Jon Snow, her favorite uh, sibling. And uh, we know, or I know, that she's not going to go to the wall. The only place that she's going to go is Bravos, which she's going to get trained in the arts of the faceless men. And in, in Bravos, they are not called the faceless men. They are called the men of many faces. So there's some irony there. So, nope, Aya is not going to go to the wall. That's uh, definitely... I thought that this, this scene, when they introduced Brienne, uh, to the hound when they meet I thought that uh, okay Aya is not going to go to Bravos but I was proven wrong she's still going to Bravos and uh, that's uh, one of the season uh, ends end scenes so yeah it's following uh, Tango is following the books um, let's see here so Brienne and the hound they met and of course there's going to be an epic battle so I guess that's uh, one of the the tweets that this they I mean Josh R. R. Martin tweeted that okay there's going to be a major battle scene involving Breen and it was quite major because it was more than one or two minutes and uh, yeah when it comes to like uh, fight scenes between two individuals besides the Oberyn Martell and the mountain that moves this is one of the awesome uh fight scenes of course it's not as 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 uh, epic as the crushing of of Aubrey Martel's hay but uh, this this uh, fight scene is one of the greats of this this season 4 so there was a lot of exchanges of uh, steel and of course uh, punches and and rocks and stuff and at last the hound lost because he well he he just uh, fell okay from that bloody height i think no ordinary person would actually uh, live to tell okay uh, of course the mess that would eventually happen to a person without 
armor uh, would be a bag of uh, a bag of of uh, flesh with lots of broken uh, things uh, holding up the person, which is the skeleton. So there's a lot of uh, ruckus at the outside because some ass, I mean, you know, the construction workers, they talk bloody loud, I don't know why. Uh, the uh, house would be under renovation. This house hasn't been been uh, occupied for years ag years already and ironically now they're going to like do something about it and I guess somebody's going to move in. So these mofos are like talking like like very, very loud and distracting me. So where was I? Hmm. So the fight scene was awesome, and the hound with his armor isn't a pulp of of meat below the cliff, and uh, it's already been established that it's different in the books. The books is different a bit slightly, of course, with the introduction of Brienne uh, kicking uh, the hound's ass, and of course the hound kicking Brienne's ass. Literally, okay. Bri Brienne uh, kicked or punched the hound in the nuts, and the, and subsequently the hound kicked Brienne in the pussy. So it was uh, interesting uh, indeed, and everything else was uh, similar to the Game of Thrones books or the Book of Song and Fire and Ice. Iosa did not give the hound the mercy of death. The hound knew that. If there is no meister behind a rock, he is going to suffer and die horribly because his leg is like gone. But in the books, I mean, it's not the his legs is gone. The tie, I guess, was a uh, open uh, gaping hole. That means most likely the tie is crushed and moving around with a crushed tie or a broken tie bone is going to be not a not a interesting time because the only thing they have is water and I don't think they have pills at all painkillers that is <coughs> or the milk of the poppy so in the books that same tie of uh, the hound is uh, supposed to be like festering and going to die I mean it smells very bad means it's like uh, corruption has taken hold and the only thing that can uh, save that leg would be a meister or a doctor and the doctor should have some like say flesh eating maggots or maggots that eat dead decayed flesh so Arya Stark uh, did not give him the mercy of death he, she just left him to like uh, this is what you deserve you can see it in her eyes she did not say it out loud she just took the bag of gold from <laughs> Uh, from from uh, the hound's uh, leg, of course the hound was quite uh, quite taken aback or surprised that she just took the gold. Uh, of course, you might be thinking, okay, the hound knew that he was going to die, but why would he have such a reaction towards uh, Arya Stark robbing uh, robbing from the dead or would be dead? But you have to bear in mind that the hound was like had his gold taken away from him all the time uh, gold was taken from like say uh, the brotherhood without banners all his gold the gold that he won in the tourney he had a lot of gold so he lost that so in compensation he kidnapped Arya Stark so that he can ransom her to uh, to the, the lots of air I mean to Li Lisa Erin and so forth so taking a taking gold from the hound, of course, he is like quite quite uh, pissed off with that. Of course, uh, he knows he's the dead man already. But why have such a reaction? Uh, why he would have such a reaction? I think he will be thinking, okay, I'm gonna die. Just kill me and take my gold. But now, Arya just took the gold without killing him first. So of course, uh, he the hound will be thinking. Oh shit! She took the gold first without killing me first, and and I think I know what's going to happen. She's going to leave me to my suffering. That's what happened. Arya Stark thought, "I'm not going to give you. I'm not going to give the Hound the mercy of death because 
he has done some bad shit and this is the uh, comeuppance or the the result or the the yin and yang of uh, his deeds uh, Arya Stark is going to leave him there to die suffering from that that wound so that's Arya Stark for you so what are the changes that they have uh, I was quite surprised that uh, okay okay wait, wait. now that that Brienne has seen Arya Stark and she has I mean Brienne has lost her what are they going to do with Brienne next season? So I guess that would be. I think Brienne is going to go to the Vale of Arryn and uh, find Sansa Stark, or maybe not, because uh, now they know from the Hound and Arya Stark that Lisa Arryn is dead. So I'm not sure what is Brienne and. Podrick Payne going to do uh, well what are they going to do later on so it's up in the air so so I guess Brienne is going to like uh, run around Westeros looking for Arya Stark she just lost her and of course she's going to like try to find Arya Stark again but uh, Arya Stark has the has the upper hand because she's far and away across the sea in Bravo, so the next thing that uh, Brienne can hope for is to find or come upon Sansa Stark. Another thing that they have changed uh, in the in the TV series is how Podrick Payne came upon uh, Brienne. In the TV series, uh, Podrick Payne was just given to to Brienne as a as a steward by Cersei Lannister I mean not Cersei Lannister by Jaime Lannister so hmm of course in the books uh, you get you, do, you don't get a chance to s to know who it was who was following Brienne so I mean if you have Podrick Payne in the TV series following uh, Brienne uh, I think that would be like well, it doesn't serve a purpose. It's not a surprise. In the book, yeah, in the end, when Brienne confronts the boy who was following her, uh, it was a surprise to find it was Podrick Payne. In TV, you can't. It's hard to do that. It's the same with. Uh, it's the same situation with, with uh, what's his name. Uh, Barristan, yeah, Barristan Selmy, who left uh, Westeros to find. Uh, Daenerys Targaryen, and he f at first came about as a as a steward, old man with a staff, uh, in the books that is. Uh, but you can't like surprise the 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 re the viewer because uh, we all know what Barristan Selmy looks like, so they 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 just suddenly say, "Oh, I am Barristan Selmy from the uh, one of the King's Guard." used to be a king's guard so you can't have it the same as the books so what else uh, did they change that I was uh, quite not not that uh, not that that thrilled with let's see okay the scenes with uh, Tyrion I'm quite uh, I'm quite sad that there was no animity between Tyrion and uh, and and Jaime Lannister. It was quite sad indeed. First of all, there is other other characters that they I think did not like introduce uh, in the King's Guard. In the King's Guard, there were the Kettlebacks, the two or three brothers, and the Kettlebacks are quite integral to the politics of of uh, Westeros kind of like important because the kettlebacks were under the employ of of uh, Jamie Lannister and uh, not Jamie Lannister sorry uh, of little finger so they did not like uh, I don't think they introduced them in the TV series it's very very sad indeed and this is going to be a butterfly effect so they're going to change quite a lot of things either they're going to change a lot of things or they're going to like remit or 
ignore a lot of the things that happens in the books so the kettlebacks are not there unfortunately uh, when Cersei Lannister and Jamie Lannister were in the guards headquarters right they made sweet love consensually okay in the king's guard tower in this episode 10 of season 4 in the books it wasn't like that okay there was quite a lot of friction between both of them and Jamie Lannister in the books was the one who says nope you're not gonna make love to me in this king's guard this is a holy place and I know that downstairs that one of the king's guard is there sleeping so no thanks no 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 and uh, coincidentally it's different okay Jamie just accepted her love and they made sweet love on the king's guard table it's very different another thing that is different is uh, what can we call it Ah, yeah, the food taster. Uh, I mean, not different. I mean, they did not like, like, like say it. One of the, one of the king's guard became a food taster for Tommen, Tommen Baratheon. So they did not choose to have that. So now we're going to like uh, talk about the freeing of Tyrion Lannister. So suddenly uh, we were like uh, given a scene of uh, Tyrion saying his uh, same words as Come about you bastards and, so, and uh, Jamie Lannister appears holding a torch And of course uh, Jamie would say Well uh, that's not how you would address your your, your uh, Well actually they change the dialogue uh, Tyrion actually says in the books You son of a whore and Jamie would say uh, that's not a not a nice way to talk about our dear beloved mother and they did not choose to like put that in the tv series or yeah in this episode 10 unfortunately so Tyrion only had one line only one line where he's supposed to have like two or three lines in confronting the person who was going into his jail so one of the things that they omitted or did not like show unfortunately was the scene between Jamie and Tyrion Lannister when uh, Jamie decided to break Tyrion out of the jail uh, in the end they did not part as friends okay in the TV series that did not happen in the books was much more powerful I I don't know why they, s they did not show it at all I'm quite disappointed between Tyrion Lannister and Jaime Lannister okay okay we know that that Tyrion married a girl when he was very young maybe 12 or 14 years old who knows and this girl was uh, employed by Jaime Lannister and at last uh, Tyrion got married to this girl and the father found out and the father brought the girl saying that she's a whore to Tyrion and proceeded to tell all his household guards to actually F her and pay her in silver and Tyrion of course was surprised and even Tyrion himself partake in the 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 stick in the whole situation uh, in regards to his wife I think the wife's name is called Tisha was it Tisha T-Y-S-H-A Tisha so that happened a long long time ago Tyrion believed that Tisha was a whore employed by Jaime uh, so Tyrion was still quite seethed or I'm sorry quite angry and still cannot let go of of what happened when he was younger his first wife was a whore so I mean after many years he still likes whores so the doing the break uh, doing the the releasing of Tyrion by Jamie Lannister Jamie was I think after so many years 
there was some poison within him. He wanted to tell the truth to Tyrion. He wanted to tell the truth to Tyrion and I wish that Jamie had the brains to actually tell Tyrion before all this bullshit happened, all this bad stuff happened, like the War of the Five Kings. If he did that earlier, maybe it wouldn't come to to such a bad uh, blow between brothers. So Jamie Lannister tells Tyrion, uh, uh, you know that time with your wife Tisha, she wasn't a whore, okay? I wanted to tell you, but I couldn't. I'm sorry. So uh, Tyrion was taken aback. He o- uh, Tyrion always thought that uh, Tisha was a whore, and he was so pissed off. He was so bloody pissed off by that revelation so 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 pissed off and until he can't think at all he hated Jamie at that time and in the show unfortunately that did not happen and in the show Jamie believed that Tyrion did not kill uh ki- kill the his uh, evil son uh What's his name? I never mind the first king, okay? The the, the incest king. Uh, Jamie did not ask Tyrion that question because it was already addressed in a couple of episodes ago, two or three or four episodes ago, when uh, before the battle of the the snake and the mountain. So they can't. Uh, I mean, he can't answer this. I mean, he can't ask. Jamie cannot ask uh, Tyrion this question. So this is a butterfly effect, okay? Jamie in the books, right? Jamie in the books uh arrived in in the king in King's Landing after the death of his son, okay? After the death of King Joffrey. In the TV series, Jamie was there, he was the the head of the King's Guard and Joffrey died. So that's uh, changes and butterfly effect happening. So in effect, we did not have the awesome scene like in the books. In the books, uh, Jamie Lannister asked Tyrion, "Did you kill my son?" And Tyrion, after hearing about Tisha being not a core at all, was so fuming, and he just said, uh, "Okay, I am the monster that they say that I am." Your your sister is fucking Kettlebag, uh, Lancel Lannister, and the Moon Boy for all he knows. I think that's what exactly what he said uh, in the third book, but I can't remember. But it's about about that one. So Tyrion was already planting seeds of doubt into Jamie's mind that uh, Cersei Lannister, without f- Jamie Lannister at the time, was already making sweet dirty quickie sex with the king's guard the the kettlebags and also lancel lannister and a lot more uh and of course Tyrion says okay i am the monster that that they say i am maybe i'm i and he's just Tyrion is so angry he's just implying that yes i'm getting back at you my brother yes i might have killed your son and uh, that was an awesome scene, and we did not get to see that at all in the TV series. That's a shame. That's a shame indeed. And after what happened there in the books, then suddenly he walks. Uh, he just he was so fuming after Tyrion Lannister uh, said all those things about uh, Cersei Lannister effing the other people and saying that uh, Tyrion is a monster as all of them say he was he just kept on walking and suddenly he encounters a a, a bar or I mean uh, what do you call those bars in the jail and he was he, he's uttered to himself oh he just uttered to himself oh he's not out of the woods yet oh shit I think I'm still in the jail and maybe Jamie is like like punking me right punking me so he's not gonna let me out uh, and, and Jamie I guess he just uh, opened the door uh, I don't know whether this happened at the end of that uh, very explosive dialogue or not but uh, it's almost similar 
so from there in the books I mean in the show that is in the show Tyrion wanted to go back to the hand tower of the hand I don't know how he actually got to the tower of hand I know that the labyrinths are very 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 difficult to to navigate around and in the show Tyrion did not meet Varys first uh, Tyrion did not meet Varys first before he kills his father in the books Tyrion meets Varys first and both of them were trudging around in the dungeons and suddenly thinking hey where does this uh, stairs lead to and Varys says well it leads to the tower of hand so uh, Tyrion says okay I'm going up in the TV series and the TV series is uh, I'm not going to go up the stairs that Jamie told me to go up to uh, I know the dungeons or these secret passages well la 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 tra la la tra la la and he was in the king's tower I mean not sorry the tower of the hand so some things you have to like uh, disbelieve that happened okay so so when it comes to like say uh, the scene between between what, what's his name uh, Tyrion Lannister and his father Tywin Lannister the number of quarrels not I mean I know the, between son and and father there are a lot of quarrels uh, I'm not talking about that type of quarrel I'm talking about the crossbow quarrel that's what you call the arrows the arrows are not called arrows when it comes to like say the 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 when you call crossbow the crossbow is called the the ammo for the crossbow is called bolts bolts and the number of bolts is called quarrels if I'm not mistaken I think so you if you have played Dungeons and Dragons and Ultima back in the 1980s and 1990s you would know your shit so I kind of like forgotten it because it's been so many years already so the number of uh, bolts that Tyrion Lannister stuck onto his father was I think one I think yeah in the books it was only one and that one actually killed Tywin Lancer and therefore we got the sh the line well you don't shit gold I mean one of the myths have been like broken Tywin Lancer does not shit gold in the TV series two bolts two bolts were shot were shot and there was no uh, line that says uh, the m one of the myths have been broken Tywin Lannister does not shit gold unfortunately so yeah some uh, some changes there uh, no shit coming out of uh, Tywin Lannister of course in the late next season we will see Tywin Lannister on the bed and smelling very bad so they're gonna like talk about the shit in this uh, HBO TV series se episode 10 season 4 we did not get to see shit Hmm, interesting. Uh, we get to see uh, Oberyn Martell dying horribly with <laughs> with his head being crushed by the mountain. Uh, yeah, it's quite a mouthful, right? Head crushed by a mountain. We get to see those gory things, but they opted uh, opted not to show us the shit coming out of Tywin Lannister's ass. I don't know why. I mean, if you're going down the gore road, shit. I mean, panning towards shit isn't that much of a big deal right but they chose to be tasteful and not show us the shit that's very strange of them to do so so that's the death of uh, Tywin Lannister and the repercussions after that uh, I would say that uh, I'm very impressed by the books uh, 1, 2 and 3 but when it comes to like book 4 and 5 when it comes to the Greyjoys, a lot of people love the Greyjoys, I don't know why, but I'm getting a bit bored with all these like uh, King's mood and Queen's mood. Uh, maybe because we, I did not get the, the chance to actually visualize what the Greyjoys look like. There are four Greyjoys or four brothers of this, uh, uh, the King of the, the Iron Isles so I cannot like envision them the only one I can envision is uh, Asha Greyjoy so maybe that's why I'm not liking it and when Tyrion if I remember correctly 
I I read book four and five many years ago. I got a sense that it was kind of like boring for Tyrion to be in the slave continent, and from there the he chanced upon a ship that carried one of the Targaryens. Yeah, there's going to be another Targaryen. It's not the Daenerys Targaryen that I'm talking about. There will be another Targaryen and there's uh, some kind of a disease that the captain uh, encountered, some kind of stone disease and there will be the Golden Company will play a hand in it. I mean, uh, the Golden Company moves somewhere. I don't remember what happened but I get a, I get a feeling that book 4 and book 5 it's kind of like draggy and and kind of like boring when it comes to like say chap the chapters in this uh, book one two three all the chapters by itself is entertaining but four and five i get the cha i got the feeling that it's going to be a quite a long read longer than expected so those are some of the changes that i wanted to talk about but uh, now let's go into the wall the war uh, particularly this episode 10. I'm quite disappointed with uh, the non-inclusion of what happened to the king beyond the walls uh, wife. In the books she kind of like died giving birth to a baby and it did not happen here uh, in the TV series unfortunately. There's going to be a baby or two. Okay, there's going to be two babies, supposed to be two babies, but now in the TV shows they only have one baby, which is the the Prest Prester's baby. So, uh, so there's a butterfly effect now. I mean, this is starting this type of butterfly effect. This is the beginning of this particular butterfly effect. Um, so I'm quite disappointed that that they did not show the baby uh, and the death of uh, of uh, the king beyond the walls wife giving birth to a baby and i'm quite i'm really really sad that i will not have the chance to actually see i mean we s i saw her okay a couple of episodes or last season i'm not sure uh the sister the sister of this uh uh, King Beyond the Walls wives, you know, the sister is a princess kind of and sh they s in the books they I mean George R. R. Martin uh, Wrote that she is a very beautiful girl Very very beautiful girl. I would just imagine this very beautiful princess I did not like find or saw a beautiful girl a princess in the TV series So maybe they can do a change of cast by including either uh, Olivia Mund Olivia Mund why would I actually choose Olivia Mund I choose Olivia Mund because she's kind of like a uh what should I call it uh, she oh what the hell is this she is like a uh, non-white, right? She is like brown, uh, yeah, kind of like brown colored. She has a type of maybe wilding. Okay, she m the wildlings are kind of like white people, Caucasian, extremely white. But I think I get a chance uh, to. S I mean, she is a very beautiful princess. She can be a beautiful princess. She has to look for it. Why did I choose Olivia Munn? It's because yesterday I started watching uh, the newsroom. Uh, yeah, the news newsroom from HBO and wow, what a rip roaring ride it was! It was great shit. Episode I watched first and second episode. Uh, it was good. It was very good. If you like the intelligent shows like The Wire and 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 Kill Generation, and if you are a fan of the the White House series or something, I don't know what's the mean. Uh, what's that show already that was very popular that has already ended? regarding the president um, I think it was the same uh, writers uh, Andy Swalkis or something like that yeah so Olivia Munn here can be the princess in the, from the beyond the wall kin beyond the wall tribe 
is beautiful enough and quite exotic. Ah, the word that I was looking for was exotic. Skin is nice. The face is not so like too white, too Caucasian. It has a bit of a, a Asian Oriental look to her. That's why she's beautiful. And uh, hopefully we get to see some nice action in in this the news room. Ah, oh, she's uh, not bad looking. Very very nice indeed. Those personalities are just making me steam. Oh, nice face as well, of course. Maybe intelligent, who knows. So another one, another candidate for this princess might be Olivia Wilde. Olivia Wilde is also very beautiful from my point of view and she is white enough or Caucasian enough for the, the wildlings. So yeah, definitely. Nice. Uh, no, okay, this is not a nice repre representation of her face, but this is a nice representation of a princess that is uh, that you give your balls for, definitely. Uh, actually, one of them actually. So, Os uh, Olivia Wilde or Olivia Munn as a princess. So, unfortunately, we get no no appearance of the princess. Very unfortunate very unfortunate indeed and of course there are so many changes like uh, the queen the queen uh stannis, Bar stannis baratheon's queen was with him in in castle black whereas in the books she was somewhere else uh some other place another castle she, she did not go into the castle black area she was at the the east side of the wall castle that was populated what was is watched by the sea yeah that's where she was so of course uh, uh it was just so awesome to see stannis baratheon's uh, men on 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 the horses and also on foot all very nicely choreographed and very cgi looking from above from the sky moving into the forest and uh you get you get a feeling that uh, the wildlings they seem to not have hundreds and hundreds of thousands of men around them it was only a couple so uh, unfortunately that the, the attacking force or the vanguard for the wildlings were just few in number unfortunately indeed so so this is just nitpicking so uh, another few changes to the wall area is you know those uh, awesome guys uh, john's friends uh what's his name uh, john's friends john snow's friends who got killed john snow's friends okay let's see here not talking about the fat dude samuel or uh, like lord of the ring sam wise gamji this is samuel tarly so let's see here Oh yeah, the you know the scene regarding uh, regarding John bringing bringing uh, his uh, l l lovely redhead to the north of the wall to burn her. I was actually really really wanting uh, the girl to actually okay the girl was on the the wood okay for the funeral pyre pyre. Uh, they, they did not show John chopping the wood and making it into a nice shape for the body, okay? That would take ages, but uh, for suspension of belief, suddenly there was a block of lots of wood uh, arranged nicely and he put the, the red head on it and his, he burned the thing, right? He burned it. I was actually wanting something to be different, which is, I w okay, there will be an established establishing shot the same shot as the one in the tv so we show or uh, the tv shows john looking at the camera and at the back of john would be the burning of the, the the funeral pyre so i was like thinking oh i really want the the red head to actually move get up get out and leave okay yeah i would love to ha that to happen actually from the back, John does not notice at all the cops, the redhead cops. Suddenly, 
uh, since fire is coming towards her, she gets get out and get got off the fun- funeral pyre and walked off somewhere. And John was oblivious to what happened. I was expecting that. I wanted that to happen, but it did not happen, unfortunately. Of course, uh, when it comes to like TV tropes, uh, the the usual thing that happens would be the White Walker redhead girl would actually just just uh, animate itself and get off the funeral pyre and attack John, and John slays it. That's what usually happens in TV. But I wanted wanted it to be different. I wanted the 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 White Walker. No, it's not the White Walker. Uh, it's called the White. Yeah, it's not the other. It's called a White. The others are the peop- the 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 things that actually transforms sh- uh, living things to to the others, whereas the the whites are animated animated dead. So uh, I'm not sure what what is what. So I wanted the the whites the white ray head to actually just reanimate itself became a. a aware and not attack John but to leave and John Snow is oblivious to what happened that would be so cool and it would be like all the fans of the books and the TV series would be thinking what the hell okay actually the books uh, fans of the books would be saying what the hell happened oh my god oh my god oh my god what will happen in the next season when John Snow fights her and stuff like that would she be changed would she be just like a mindless zombie or would she be a uh, uh, the other something that is aware and is intelligent and has the memories of the past something like that that would be so awesome so let's see uh, Jon Snow's brothers in arms uh, Gren and and Fren Gren I think Gren so this is Gren and this is Gran as well. So Gran took the place of uh, of what's his name, uh, Three Fingered Hob, in the tunnel, killing the the Magna of the ten. Not not Magna, uh, the the King of the Giants. Yeah. So he died. In the books, he did not die. He survived. So butterfly effect now, butterfly effect. Oh my god, he is dead. I don't know why they sacrificed his ass. He did not die in the books, and he's dead now. God damn it! And the other guy, Pip. Pip did not die in the books. He survived, and in the TV series, he's dead. I don't know why they they choose that because we had the we had the connection with these characters, Pip and Gwen, and now the only person that we have. Uh, with us, uh, who is Jon Snow, is uh, uh, Sam Tolet. I think his name is Sam Tolet, yeah. The person who is always like saying very funny lines and very funny lines and always being pe- pessimistic. Uh, Sam. I don't know what's his name, really. Shit. Uh, F. John's friends. Jon Snow's brothers. Let's uh, see what's happening. Jon Snow has a lot of uh, brothers and good friends in the north, but in the end, they betrayed him. So, and we only get to know what the f happened truly happened in book six, which is not out yet at all. So Jon Snow's uh, brothers, one of them who survived the thing, would be. The person with the best lines in the books, and let's see here. Oh God! It's not helping much this wiki. Now mine uh, name is. Uh, not not that important, but I know he survived, so that's that's uh, good and said and done. So I'm so 
upset of the princess not being introduced would she be introduced in the the next season with a baby uh, I don't think so unfortunately there so there won't be a extremely beautiful girl at all oh yeah the you know the the shot where where Jon Snow's girlfriend uh, the redhead uh, was on that that block uh, on the funeral prior and the, the the camera was panning up away from her uh, from like exactly above her that was a very nice looking shot I mean her face that is very nice very nice indeed very very nice not not sexually that is I'm not a, not a what you call those necrophiliacs no 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 so what else what else is there to talk about not sure actually I'm going to pause it and go and see what happened I know that uh, what's her name uh, comic book girl 19 has some shots of the the scenes of Game of Thrones on her blog I'm not going to take the risk of showing you what the F happened okay maybe I am just for I hopefully it won't like uh, just show some of the scenes Okay, okay, no sound, please. So this is just to help me out. To review, okay, this is uh, just to help the review. So this is not that important. I'm not showing the whole damn show at all. Oh, this is not the one. Shit. So HBO, please, uh, this is for review purposes of... Uh, trying to like uh, piece together what's happening so do not uh, f me in the ass if you want me to want me to take down the video just tell me ha 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 so Stannis Baratheon is always like uh, like an asshole definitely uh, stick up his ass all the time I know that how that feels I'm not saying that I'm gay okay so this is the making of the the giants and whatnot. Oh yeah, another thing that uh, that that I am so like pissed off that they did not show in the in the show is Cole Hands. There is a character that saved Sam and uh, and Gilly when they were stuck in the north. Cole Hands is, I think either a white no it's not a white it's one of the others uh huh the one 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 of the blue eyed monsters the glowy eye monsters who rides a giant horse I don't think it's a horse it's kind of like a moose I think so why did they not include cold hands I'm very very surprised and also, why didn't like they talk about uh talk about talk about what's her name uh, uh Kathleen Stark? Kathleen Stark is supposed to be, you know, kind of like alive or undead, like what happened to the 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 leader of the Brotherhood of uh, Brotherhood of uh, what you call Brotherhood without banners, yeah. Brotherhood without uh, frontiers or Brotherhood Sun's frontier, Brotherhood Sun's country, whatever. So uh, they did not tease that in this season, but I, I, I hope they're gonna tease it next season, cause she's gonna be quite a uh, quite an advocate and quite a uh, what you call it, quite an outspoken character. Yeah. Uh, did you get the pun? Outspoken character for, for, uh, for what should we call it? Uh, Kathleen Stark's undead character. Ha 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 ha! I'm laughing at my own jokes. So Cole Hands was in there, and and oh yeah, the scene, the skeletal scene, right? Skeletal scene was pretty awesome indeed. Pretty awesome indeed. So this is the point where we see uh. Jamie Lannister and Cersei Lannister doing the incestual bit. Yep, this is the one. Nice, very nice. I like it. So we got skeletal remains, and we get to see who is under the tree. 
Some people say that the under tree, the person underneath it is Brandon Stark. Brandon Stark, the builder, but I'm not sure. There's so many things that I don't remember and might have uh, not put two and two together. So it's almost approaching 54 minutes already. I don't think I have anything else to say. So the wall has been covered and uh, what call it? Uh, Aya has been covered. Sansa, I don't know what sh will happen to her. Will she be a will she be a badass by herself uh, with the tutelage of uh, Littlefinger at her side? Uh, the wall covered. There'll be many more things happening at the wall. Uh, hopefully next season we get to see a lot more of the others. Uh, maybe there's some political happenings in the the others camp. That would be so awesome. But never mind. Then we can uh, see the Targaryen. Kind of like boring. Yes, it's kind of like boring now. The Targaryen full of thing, uh, involving Daenerys and her stuff. Maybe next season we get to see Tyrion meeting up with uh, King of the Fan Zone. Uh, yep, maybe that will happen. Then uh, we'll be introduced to the new Targaryen. Then we'll be introduced to the new uh, people who support the Targaryen in the West in Westeros, which is I think the names is like Cornington, I think, or something else. Not sure. Of course, next season we get to see the Greyjoys. Kind of boring, okay, the Greyjoys. And uh, one of the most exciting factions would be the ones in the south. The the snakes. Oberyn Martell's uh, bastard daughters. And also, yeah, Dawn. Dawn would be quite exciting indeed. And now, what else is there? Let's see. Who have I covered? The Hound. The Hound might might or might not be dead. It wasn't like solidified in the books. He might be a grave digger or he might not be. So who knows? Uh, what else? What else is we have to cover? There is also the part involving Old Town and a certain magician or uh, I don't know what happened there. It was uh, quite. Uh, quite hard to actually remember it at all something happened in old town so let's see what else is there Brienne has been covered already uh, next season there will be a lot of uh, political fuck ups by by Cersei Lannister definitely actually that would be season 6 already I do not know whether they cover it in season 5 so there is a lot of things that can be covered in season 5 but they might not cover at all so in this book, book four of uh, called a Feast of Crows, that Cersei Lannis is going to f up uh, quite a lot. She's going to give power, power back to the Septons or to the religious group, and there she effed up again and blah blah blah. She was so effed up. Her her political intrigues or political maneuverings actually bites her in the ass all the time. So we get to see if you hate Cersei Lannister. This is the book that you should read because she's gonna like uh, she thinks that she's so smart, but actually, in the end, she's just a woman. Okay, I'm not gonna be sexist here. I'm just saying, uh, she's gonna like get her ass bitten by more than one or two or three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, uh, snakes. Not nothing to do with the martels, but uh, you get my drift. So that's about it. I think I do, do not have any more uh, reasons to continue on the podcast. A lot of changes, a lot of characters died. But uh, Jon Snow's brothers uh, died, whereas inside the inside the books they did not die. I don't know why they did that. There was no princess, that uh, beautiful, super beautiful princess that was like uh, introduced. or She was introduced, but they did not like... Uh, put her in this episode 10 of season 4 unfortunately so uh, normally I'll be waiting for for comic book uh, comic book girl 19's analysis analysis of this uh, season 10 uh, but one of the sad things is you know game of game game of 
not Game of Trailers. Game Trailers, they also have a podcast involving this Game of Thrones and it's roughly about 50-40 minutes. It was quite in interesting indeed. I don't think they will be doing one on episode 10 since Game Trailers have already been sold to sold by Viacom to some other entities so they are restructuring and a lot of uh, the, the top senior uh, contributors to Game of Trailers, uh, they are not going to like continue on with their work at Game Trailers so I do not get the chance to hear their opinions regarding the HBO series so that is a sad thing for Game of Trailers I mean Game of Game Trailers so I think that's about it see you in Malaysia or where we're from hopefully you enjoyed this podcast involving my thoughts I might not know anything at all or I might be wrong I'm sorry about that but this is a podcast involving my uh, befuddled thoughts on this awesome franchise called Game of Thrones HBO so hopefully in the future we'll get more awesome sh stuff from HBO and I get the feeling that yes we will still get a lot of awesome stuff from HBO thank you for listening over and out and normally when it comes to a podcast I know there should be more than one person uh, talking but I am one guy I have only one dick so bear with it, and if you like dicks, I mean if you're a girl and you like dicks, you know where to contact me. Bye-bye.